Uh, I'm Kevin from Lenovo. Uh, so I'm going to talk about the open source uh, Redfish engine. Uh, actually, th this is not uh, something like uh, how to implement the Redfish specific schema, but uh, a kind of framework to help us uh, develop our Redfish service quickly. Yeah, we uh, we had this idea about uh, since the beginning of last year, uh, because you know uh, the Redfish is moving very fast. Uh, we often see the the DMTF uh, discussion and the update on the Redfish schema and the uh, Redfish spec. So sometimes we have to change our design and also repeat do some repeat work uh, because of uh, there is a new attribution on the property because uh, because there is new enum enum uh, member or new annotation uh, we have to some change uh, to to adapt this uh, new change to ad adapt this you know, spec and schema update so we do want a more efficient engine to reduce the maintenance effort on the schemas uh, and the Redfish spec upgrading, but focus more on the Redfish schema itself. Okay, uh, what we, what we want to want from the Redfish engine uh, first, it should be a small engine with with a small engine with few memory footprint and it could be the a library so it I, we want it to run on both bmc and the laptop uh, it means uh, portable and we do want to have a method to tune the tune, tune the response time uh, one of the most important thing uh, for redfish engine is uh, we have to separate the Redfish protocol service uh, from the Redfish data model. For example, uh, I'm focusing on the uh, Red storage controller. Uh, it's unnecessary for me to know the detail of the e how to calculate the e-tag, how to assign the privilege. I need to focus more on the data, uh, data model of RAID volume drive, right? So you know, the Redfish spec has a long list of requirements. We don't want to this want this requirement spreading or the schema, but we do want put all of the uh, protocol and the service related uh, modules inside the Redfish engine. And also we want to extract uh, most common things in the Redfish schema outside of the data model. So based on which we can uh, make, mo make the most automation work. For example, we can auto-generate the uh, class file, which containing the static definition from the schema. And we also want to do uh, auto-generation for our Redfish uh, response for the most common uh, commonalities like the headers, the metadata, the old data, uh, the old data information, the navigation property, the links, and so on. And also, you know, the Redfish will cover a lot of area, uh, which means we need to get the data from all kinds of the data source. So we do need need a unified method to represent the the diversity of uh, data type and data source. Uh, this can also uh, make sure we have a common coding style when multiple people multiple people are working on the uh, Redfish schemas. And finally, uh, about the performance. Uh, as you know, we cannot promise uh, each schema has the same response time, uh, but we do want a method to tune 
tune the response time. Uh, most time it means the caching. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the uh, snapper architecture first. Uh, basically, it has three parts. The first is the in green color is the web server and the application server. We are using the nginx and the judicom and the Flask framework, which for which using which use the WSGI interface. Uh, the, I think this has uh, a couple of benefits. Uh, first, we can move some uh, work balance work to the nginx instead of uh, event event it in the Redfish engine, and also if we have we have better choice on the web server or application server, we can replace them without changing our engine code. Okay, the second part is the engine. Uh, as I just mentioned, uh, we put the most uh, protocol and the service modules inside the, the engine, uh, including the request parsing, the data model parsing, and the uh, Redfish related uh, related to service service module like a session token authentication privilege. And we also extract most uh, commonalities from the uh, Redfish schema. We put the base class uh, in this engine for auto-generation of the response. We put our auto-generated class file in this layer. I will talk about it later. Uh, the third part is, is the exact uh, uh, Redfish schema implementation. Uh, we also put the data interface layer here to help developer uh, to to work on their own uh, schemas, and we have the uh, backend data provisioning uh, inside this this layer, and also providing the caching. We also have the uh, standalone tool to, to generate the uh, uh, schema, uh, the class files from schema. Okay, uh, next I will introduce uh, several design points, how Snapper uh, take the efficiency into account. First is about the class hierarchy. So at, at the bottom is the base class and the resource class map, map to the standard schema. Uh, in this layer, uh, there are many methods to uh, use to help assemble the response data uh, without your manual work. And we we put the most com uh, common commonality things in in this uh, base per base classes, and the, in the middle, the middle part, the middle block is the auto generated class. Uh, they are all from the schema files, so this br bring a, a great benefit from uh, schema upgrading. For example, uh, if we are we are planning to use the upgrading upgrade to the schema 2018.3. There are uh, some new uh, annotations on the property. There are new privilege uh, defined for the class or operation, or there are some uh, new enum, enum members. We just need to use the utility to generate all this uh, class files from schema and replace them. So the base class will contain all the privilege validation, uh, the enum validation in the request body, and even the annotation inside the uh, schema uh, schema class file. So you don't need to, need to uh, change the implement, implementation or the base class, you just need to uh, 
uh, replace the auto generate the class file. So above the uh, class file, uh, uh, exactly what you need to focus on the schema class. You just need to fill in the dynamic data uh, you are interested in to implement in these files, these class files. And there are one to one, one on one mapping to the auto generated class. For example, the computer system you, uh, is derived from the underscore P computer system and the uh, chassis and the power. And also on the top is the all the Redfish protocol and the service modules. You can extend your uh, modules uh, based on the update of the Redfish schema uh, without changing the engine code or schema class class file. Okay, ne next is about the resource tree. Uh, basically, result, result, you can view the Redfish data module as a resource tree. Uh, the concept in, in Redfish spec is uh, the resource tree is actually a set of URI. There is only one well known uh, uh, URI that is the service service root, but uh, actually we cannot ma make sure all the rest UI are consistent because it may change uh, our hardware configuration, our uh, designer. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes uh, the cross reference reference in the between the class uh, result in the reference ring. So let's considering how the net network adapter collection, uh, how does it know how many members under it? And how does the network adapter knows uh, the reference link uh, to PCI device on the system schema? Apparently, hard code is not a good idea. <coughs> So in Snapper, we introduce the accessor key. You can make your own rule to, uh, to define the accessor key. Each URL is mapped to the accessor key. Uh, here we define a, a, a accessor key with the instance ID and the class name. So you can map between the URI and the accessor key. Uh, the question is, how do we get the topology of the URI uh, and the accessor key? Uh, if you are using the data module passing, you can certainly get part of the topology, but uh, it's not enough. You must implement the get member ID accessor key for each resource. That means when the PCI device collection calls the uh, PCI, the, it wants to know the PCI device ID, it will call the PCI device uh, get member accessor key. Then this function will return the instance ID and the, the accessor key. So that builds the relationship between the schema instance ID and the accessor key and the URI. So back to the previous question, how do we know the, how does the network adapter knows there is a link under the system schema? It just call the function, get a member accessor key for the PCI device class. Then PCI device class will return the accessor key. And based on the information inside the accessor key is the slot number on board one and slot three. Then we use the mapping API to get the URI. Yeah. And please note, uh, 
if you are using the hard code of UI, the DMTF mockup may change, may move the PCI device from system to the chassis over time. We don't know when he makes the change, but if you are using the uh, accessor key, you only need to do a small change. For example, if you are under the chassis, you can determine the determine you if you need to return the right mapping uh, by the containing pass. If the containing pass is on the chassis, then you return this PCIe device device table. But if you are under the system, you don't need to return any mapping. Okay, uh, next is about the unified data, data interface layer. Uh, since the Redfish schema cover many areas, there are many data source and the data type. So internally, we will use the binary JSON, BSON, to represent the internal data structure. And based on which we can provide the common API to set and uh, get data. Uh, this actually split the data provision to two layers. One layer is just simply fill in the schema data, and the other is for data driver, uh, which actually interact with the hardware interface. And we can uh, group this data. You know, uh, Redfish request normally they read uh, uh, read or write a bunch of data. So we can group the group this, this data by profile. We can put the inventory data together. We can put the uh, red uh, VPD data together. We can put the red data together by different profile. So as you can see, uh, several schema can share the same uh, data returned from uh, this API. So by nature, this kind of data interface can centralize the data caching management. Uh, this, this, this is an example of data interface API. We provide the two APIs, get data and set data. The first example, get the data from uh, profile computer system non-volatile data, which means uh, most of this data uh, are, con are consistent. We don't need to retrieve them again and again. And, and we can also call the function defined in the XML uh, with parameters and the set data by key value format. Yeah, on the right side, the, the XML define the profile uh, in the computer system group. Uh, you, you, you can see we support the variable and table, and there are flags for the uh, writable data. And at the bottom is the usage of BSON. You can see this kind of uh, BSON usage is very straightforward and easy to use. So uh, next, talk about the data caching. Uh, in previous data interface, by nature, it has the caching management capability. So. Basically, we in Snapper, we can have two cache layers. Uh, the first is the JSON text, uh, uh, JSON text caching. Uh, is mapped uh, UI to, to the uh, JSON response. The most common scenario is the uh, log entries. For example, you have five, uh, 4,000 log entries. Uh, this this kind of data will take a long time to do serialization. So if we cache this data in, 
in memory or database like Redis, you can save a lot of uh, serialization time. But uh, this kind of caching uh, has a problem that is uh, the granularity is too big. It, it cannot share between, between class. Okay, then we have the second layer, uh, L2, L2 caching based on BSON. Because BSON is a uh, binary, it saves lots of uh, memory, and we can group this data by profile. Here, take an example. We put the storage inventory together in a in a, uh, in a BSON object, and we also put VPD through data in another uh, BSON object, and and also about the network adapter. Uh, here is an example. When when you uh, when the client use the uh, curl or postman to access the uh, network collection. Uh, the back end actually already have all the network adapter information from onboard to slot one to slot three. So if we cache this data, you don't need to access them again when next time user access the slot one network adapter. So the most important thing for L2 cache is how we group this data, how we determine the granularity of this uh, BSON object. Yeah, I, uh, I did a comparison between the Snapper and the BMC web. Actually, I don't find many examples to do the comparison, so so please forgive me if, if I have misunderstanding in this table. Uh, here uh, is a little unfair to compare BMC web with Snapper because uh, BX, BMC app is, is actually uh, do everything web server, uh, which support not only Redfish, but also the web GUI, the console redirection, where Snapper focus on the Redfish engine, a lightweight, lightweight engine. Uh, it does not create uh, the web server. It can re even replace the uh, web server it connected to. So I think it's possible that we can in integrate this uh, engine with BMC app, BMC web. Uh, and because it's using the Nginx and the Flask framework, uh, it can leverage uh, many uh, open source features like SSE WebSocket from the Nginx and the uh, Nginx and the Flask modules. And we also create the uh, data interface layer to reduce the effort of a schema developer. Uh, about the performance, um, I see the BMC web is using the boost Azale. Uh, so it should be, it should have a high efficiency on performance. Uh, Snapper use the C extension module and uh, we rely on the Python networking library uh, G event for concurrent access uh, because the Unicom is a pre-fork pre worker mode. Um, it supports the multi multiple process module. So, but, but we also have the capability to support the multi-thread. And we have two levels of data caching to tune the performance. About the protocol and the service, uh, I see the BMC web will rely on the web server cron support. Uh, I also see there are some missing function uh, defined in the Redfish spec, like 
uh, e tag pro data e tag property and the query parameters and the task and the head head operation while well, snapper in our snapper implementation we are fully compliant with redfish spec 1.5 uh, and also, if DMTF uh, Redfish spec have a new requirement on the protocol service, and we can easily add, add a new modules without changing the current schema code or engine code. Or, or uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, we should only change the engine code. Uh, next is about the Redfish data model. Uh, I see the BMC web uh, schema class uh, is derived from the node, which is coupled with the Chrome app instance. Um, for each schema, it is using the uh, static URL routing which means the class is binding it, it, with the hard code URI. Uh, and all the schema implementation should be in the schema class and action class. But for Snapper, we are running the runtime, uh, runtime binding between the URI uh, and the re Redfish resource because we have the uh, data model passing the EDM passing. So there is no hard code UI. Uh, and we are also trying to do most automation work uh, to like uh, we generate the most common data in the response for each schema. Uh, about the Redfish upgrading, yeah, I, I do see I do see the BMC web have auto generation for the uh, magic message registry. But when they, I think when they, they are going to upgrade the schema, they need to change the uh, code for the schema version, enum, etc. For Snapper, we generate all the registry including error uh, message registry, event registry, privilege registry uh, from the schema file. And for the BELS registry, we just uh, runtime generated from the data we got from UEFI. Yeah, and we also, uh, as I mentioned in, in the class, in the, Sorry. <laughs> yeah. um, oh, thank you. Uh, as I just mentioned, the inefficiency one, the class hierarchy, the snapper used the utility to generate all the uh, schema header files from all data XML schema. Yeah, uh, for. If you want to upgrade the schema bundle, we just need a few minutes to replace the header file. Uh, next, uh, these are what we want to do uh, for Snapper uh, in future. Uh, first, we need to move move the move from Python two to Python three. Uh, since uh, the Python 2 uh, will not be maintained in 2020. Uh, but uh, the snapper uh, actually has less dependency on Python. It should not, should not be a big work. Uh, and also, if we want a smaller footprint for the Redfish engine, um, I think uh, we can consider a better web server as an alternative, you know, the Python will consume memory, uh, more memory than C or C++ code. Yeah. 
and also for the old data schema parsing, because currently the Redfish schema bundle is very large. So when we parsing the XML file, uh, it need more memory, but we can disable some functions, like we don't need the uh, description, long description annotation. Uh, that will save uh, a lot of memory, I think. Uh, the the most uh, thing I am interested in the is the PRDM for RDE. Uh, th this is the new specification from uh, DMTF. It's just published a couple a couple of months ago. But as you know, this standard is very important uh, to support the I/O management. It actually provides the Redfish management capability on I/O device, the PCI device. So basically, the BMC acts as a proxy between the Redfish client and I/O device. So what what we need to do is to translate the Redfish message and operation to PRDM message operations. Two things we need to do. The one is the binary JSON encoding decoding, because the option card does not accept uh, JSON text. They only accept the binary. So we we want the DMTF to drive this kind of tool open source. And also, uh, we need the schema dictionary di discovery. Uh, and we also need the PRDM library to support the new PRDM type for RDE. Uh, next, we we want to add a DBus interface support in our data interface layer. Uh, it can be used for a lot of data source like telemetry, uh, cache uh, refreshing, uh, eventing. Uh, currently, we we have a simulator opened on the GitHub Lenovo repository. It's part of the Snapper code. It can, but it it, it almost cover most of the engine part of code. It can run on your laptop, or if you want to run inside BMC, yes, you can. Change the make fair or uh, to do it. And I also want to have a quick in introduction on the a few slides. This is the, the auto generation class. The left is the uh, resource class file. The right, uh, top right is the registry. Top bottom, uh, bottom right is the privilege file. So for the schema file, you can see the it created the most uh, static information from the schema, including the property and the property attribution, and the action information, OEM, OEM property, and also the the attribution on the, the annotation, all kinds of annotation on the properties. Yeah, and on for the registry, you can directly use the function to add the message into the Redfish response. Uh, this is how Snapper generates the resource tree. On the left is the recursion to build the topology. Uh, it starts from service root and uh, transfers all the properties and expand them and also call the uh, get member function, get member ID, access a key of the child node. Finally, it generates the URI and the access key table, mapping table. So 
take a look at the PCI device of computer system. How do we determine, how do we set, fill the uh, value for this property? It's just invoke the function for PCI device. And the PCI device uh, class will return the table of ID and the accessor key. So based on the table, uh, based on the ID and the accessor key, you can search the URI by the information inside the access key. Then you got the data for PCI device. This is our URI runtime binding. We don't hard code the URI, but for each segment in the URI, we will bind it to class like Redfish V1 will bind with the binding is service root and the chassis is so it's a chassis collection and the chassis ID one means uh, chassis class and the key segment one <laughs> and the power for power class. Uh, this is OEM extension. And finally, th this is uh, what the schema impl implementation looks like. Uh, it's for the serial interface. So from this handle get function, you just need to fill in a few dynamic dynamic uh, properties, prop dynamic data. For the rest uh, data in the response, you, you don't need to care. And the right is the right side is the uh, patch operation. Okay, I, I think that's all. Any questions? Uh, if I wanted to try out Snapper, is all the code out on Lenovo slash Snapper? Yeah, that's correct. So do you have any actual performance numbers comparing your implementation to BMC Web? Uh, CPU usage, that kind of thing? Yeah, I, I have, uh, since the I implement the the Lenovo implement the uh, Snapper full code stack, including the engine and the specific uh, schema. We implement the 2070.3. So part of the data provider code are Lenovo private code. So this performance data are all based on the full code stack. So if you look at the file size, the engine size is is uh, about 400, uh, 400 kilobytes and the, the data data interface is large is about one megabyte because we have the all underlying code including the database database access ipmi access mctp prdm access they are all in there so this data interface is is large. And we also have the Snapper provider, which implements all the dynamic data of schemas. It's three megabytes. One follow one question. Are you proposing this as a placement or an alternative? Uh, when you are using the uh, Snapper engine, you need to replace the you need to implement your own provider and the coding on your own data interface layer. Maybe you can use your <coughs> use the debug uh, debug. You can use your own database in the data interface functions and the profiles. So the the data interface library in your system 
depends on your data driver implementation and also the data provider. Right side is about the memory footprint. Uh, the Junicom, I just mentioned the Python will consume uh, large memory. So the Junicom is 10 megabytes. Uh, in the 10 megabytes, two is Junicom is itself. The other eight megabyte is Flask, uh, Flask module, the web framework. And currently with the Redfish schema bundle to 2018.3, the passing result will occupy eight megabyte. But if we reduce the an unnecessary annotation, it can be smaller. Uh, and for the snapper engine and the full provider, because we have a full stack, is 16 megabyte. But if you want to uh, check the real size of a pure Redfish a snapper engine, you can use the simulator. And uh, remember, strip the file. In, in current open source, I, I haven't stripped the file yet. Uh, this is the VSS RAM. Yeah. I walked in late. Sorry if I'm repeating or asking questions you already answered. Did, is this a? Did you say this was a? This used to be a private code base, and now you're open sourcing it. Is that what happened? Uh, the engine code is already opened. But did it start off as a proprietary code base, and now you're, you're donating it, or, or have uh, you been developing this code stack in the open since the beginning? The only pro pro private code is our uh, provider implementation. The whole engine is already open. I, I understand. Yeah, I understand it's open now. Did it start open? Did you yeah, we just opened it a, a <laughs> couple of weeks ago because you know. Um, we need to go through the uh, open source review process of our company. Yeah, so we opened it uh, about a couple, a, a couple of weeks ago. Right. It was originally developed in house at Lenovo for, for us, so it was originally developed proprietary. Okay. And we're donating the engine. Okay, and how long, how long have you, has it been in house, can you say? Uh, we have this idea since the beginning of last year. Okay. Was there yeah. like was there ever a point in kind of your decision making process where you're looking at BMC Web, and and you decided nope we're gonna we're gonna do this? Uh, not exactly. Uh, since we are looking at BMC App, because uh, we have a uh, it's actually happened in our uh, x86 server. We have uh, some problem when. The Redfish, uh, when the DMTF uh, Redfish forum, forum uh, upgrading their design, their spec, the schema, we have some pain point, like uh, the schema update, uh, the property attribution enum. Sometimes we have to re redesign our Redfish uh, or do some repeated work. So we want such a more efficient engine to help accelerate our schema development. Yeah, the comparison, I, I just did this operation uh, recently. Before okay. that, I, I don't, I don't, uh, in last year, I haven't looked into the BMC web. One more question. So like there are a number of comparison points there. It's a good chart, like why would, would it, is it possible to get these things that are missing from BMC Web into BMC Web, or is it your kind of opinion that it's sort of a, maybe yeah. a last uh, I think uh, the snapper can be compared as a library, and uh, its web server can is replaceable. So if we have a better choice of web server and application server, 
we can replace the nginx and the junicom yes i think it's possible to integrate the snapper with bmc web okay thank you any other questions Okay, thank you. Thanks.